Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released watchOS 10.5 to the public. watchOS 10.5 is available around the world for all watchOS 10 supported devices and is available now. Now, if you're a beta tester or a developer, you won't have an update as this update is the same exact build number and update as the RC2 that was released last week. So watchOS 10.5 RC2 is the same, you just get to try it out early. Now, as far as other Apple releases, Apple also released many different updates, iOS 17.5, iPadOS 17.5, updates for Apple TV, HomePod, Mac, and other older devices as well. Now, as far as the overall size, it's going to vary depending on which device you're installing from, but it should be around one to 200 megabytes or so. Let me know what your install size was in the comments below. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into our settings here under settings. We'll go down to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is two one T five seven six. And like I said before, this is the same build. If you were on the RC two version. Now, as far as what's new, if we go back to the home screen or our main watch face here, press and hold and then swipe over. We'll go ahead and add a new one and you'll see we have a new pride radiance band. We have different colors to go along with this. You'll see we can switch through different ones and there are no complications to go along with this. So this is something Apple does every single year and it goes along with a new pride radiance watch band. But first, if we go into this one and then we set it and maybe I put it on my wrist like this, set it down. You'll see it sort of goes to sleep. If I pick it up, it moves around. It has a nice little animation to it and just looks pretty good overall as it animates when you lift it. If we go to Apple's website, you'll see that they have the new pride collection. And if we scroll down, the new pride band is available a little bit later. So it does require watch OS 10.5, but also comes out on May 22nd for $99 or May 23rd in other regions outside the U S and Canada. So that's available or will be available pretty soon. Now, as far as other new features and changes, well, there's not a whole lot more in this one. In fact, this is a pretty small update where Apple just says that there's bug fixes and security updates. Now, as far as bug fixes, they don't say specifically what it is as far as maybe a battery fix or anything else, but we do know one thing that's fixed. Thanks to a viewer that sent this in where if maybe you're using a third party app, such as overcast to listen to podcasts, let me turn this down here, press play and it will actually start playing and sync properly. Now on the Apple watch, I can control it. It works as you would expect, jump around as you would expect. And it looks like those issues have been fixed. So if you're using pocket casts or overcast, that seems to be working properly with this update. We do have some security updates to go along with this. If we go to Apple's security website on Apple's security website, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have all the latest updates I mentioned earlier. If we go down to where we have watch OS 10.5, there's quite a few to talk about here with Apple AVD, Apple mobile file integrity, maps, remote view services, shortcuts, and WebKit. So there's some important security updates. And if you wanted to read this, it says the impact and app may be able to read sensitive location information. They fixed it with the description here. A path handling issue was addressed with improved validation. And then they mention who actually gave them the tip that there was an issue here as far as the security. So if you're wondering if you should install watch OS 10.5, I would definitely recommend it just because of the security updates. Of course you get additional bug fixes and maybe some we haven't heard about. Apple really needs to update their app a little bit better. And if you have the feedback app still installed, if we go into that, it looks like it's disappeared on my device, but if you still have it and you go to their, their public notes, you'll see in their notes, all they say is they have two resolved issues for store kit. So they haven't really mentioned a whole lot here. This is just more on the developer side, but there's a not a whole lot of updates going on with this particular one. Of course, we'll see watch OS 10.6 next, and that's typically what we have every year. So we'll have watch OS 10.6 beta one, maybe on the 14th or 15th, and then a final release sometime probably in June. However, the big updates we're waiting for will come with watch OS 11. If Apple updates this in a big way, we do expect that for iOS 18, but we should see those specific updates probably on the 10th when Apple introduces iOS 17.5 along with watch OS 11. So after the keynote, they'll allow that to be downloaded by developers. And then usually a couple of weeks later by public beta testers. As far as anything else, well, there's no other features to mention, but performance seems to be a little bit smoother in this update. That's the same with iOS 17.5. But if we go into the alarm clock here, maybe we go back to the weather 
takes a second to load, but everything seems to be smooth and fast. No real issues as far as that goes. So if we go into the walkie talkie, or maybe we want to go to the camera here, it opens up quickly on the iPhone. Everything is performing as you would expect. With battery life, battery seems to be pretty good. I know some people were having issues before with it, but you'll see I'm down to 70%. So we'll go into our battery settings here. So under settings, then we'll scroll down to battery. There's battery. And if we scroll down a little bit further, you'll see battery health. Last time I checked, I was at 100%. In fact, I'm still at 100% on my Apple Watch Ultra 1, and this is the Ultra 2. If we go back for battery life, you'll see it was last charged to... 100% at 1059. It's been down a little bit today to 70%. So it's been actually lasting me a couple days. Now I know it really depends on what you're doing, whether you're using it for working out, if you're just monitoring information, or maybe you're just using it as a watch. It really depends, but it seems to be getting me through a couple days. But if you're just installing this, give it a couple days for it to stabilize. As far as those wondering what watch face I'm using, if we press and hold, you'll see this is the modular watch face. If we go to edit, you'll see it's pretty much normal complications where we have the date here, we have messages, then music, compass, and weather, but in the middle is the app called Lumi. So if we go into that, you can see different information such as sunrise, countdown to golden hour, or a good time to take photos or video. And this is actually a paid app I paid for and put on the watch. I think it looks great. I've been using it for years and it works well. And there's an iPhone companion for that also. So that's everything in watchOS 10.5. Not a real big update, but some security updates some bug fixes, and that's pretty much it with a new watch face. Let me know if you've installed it already and how it's going for you. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.